Loma Haney. If Cabosa doesn't fight, but, Haney. Uh, it's a great fight. Um, you know, Loma's been out for some time now, but I could just tell you this: those type of fighters, the, you know, Loma and all, bro, they stay in shape year round, bro. Like, you can't depend on Loma to be weak for you know anyone to be strong or Haney either. So, but if it's the right time, I think it's the right time right now coming off this long, long layoff for Loma. For Haney, if he's gonna beat him, it'll be right now because he doesn't want Loma to get a tune-up fight at all. He doesn't want him get, you know, get acclimated. So it's the it's the perfect time. But it's a great fight. Um, I like I said, I, I I think Haney, I think Haney can get him. I think Haney can control range and distance. I think there's some things he needs to tighten up on. And but I think the better the competition, the better Haney we will see. Give my my honest answer. You. You guys have to consider who's who's making the call here, and this is really Ryan is is the one calling out uh, a, a Tank, and he's the one really pushing for this fight. So, what's early to us could be right on time for Ryan. He's he's got he has his game plan, and then we all have what we think he should do. So, I always respect the fighter to have have their game plan, know what they want to do, and they go after it. You know? Sean, uh, rank the top three lightweights for you right now. Uh, Lord, I, I Tank is my number one guy. Um, I would say Tank, Lomachenko, and then you say Haney, but I mean, everybody else is right there. Tank, Loma, Haney. Everybody else is right there. You think Devin Haney fights Lomachenko in October? That'd be tight. <laughs> That'd be tight. Every fight's great, and and given there's no injuries in these fights, even when win or lose, like the loser should be fighting somebody else. The loser's not supposed to go down the ladder. That that should be gone, man. That's not that's a part of boxing that shouldn't exist. You know what I mean? I, I remember when I was coming up, and there would be guys that that were hoping I would lose so that I wouldn't eventually be in line to fight them. But they knew that if I lost, the business of boxing would handle itself, and they wouldn't have to say, "I don't want to fight Sean," or "I'd rather fight this this guy or that guy." You know. So I think that that is a part of boxing that should not exist. If a guy like like Ryan uh, Garcia loses to a guy like Lomachenko or loses to Tank Davis, if Ryan isn't injured and and Ryan says, you know, hey, I still everything still is clicking the way I wanted to click, put him in the ring with Haney. Because even though he lost the tank, he could be Haney. You know what I mean? Like, every fight's great. And we, we, we'd be robbing ourselves if we if we say that this fight isn't worth something because we see one of the guys lose. You know what I'm saying? Top three. Man, you know, you got me off my guard right now. I, I would say Haney is one of them. No doubt about it. Uh, I would say... Um, Man, who else is the lightweights? Man, I don't have my list in front of me. Loma, Loma, definitely. Uh, you know, Tank, Tank is, Tank is, Tank is one too. You know, regardless of is he a three division world champion and yada yada yada. You know, um, Tank is dangerous, dude. You know, and and I still want to see him fight against the upper echelon, but. I mean, the way the rate he's going and where he's going, he's a big seller. He's not looking to mix it up with anybody. And every time he fights, he puts on a spectacular uh, event and performance. So it's more about the business side with him and his handlers. Um, and that's on them. I, I don't agree with it, but that's on him. But I think the top, as far as talent goes, I would say those three. Those three. You're willing to do whatever it takes to get there, bro. You're at that point now. He's 30 years old. He don't have a lot of time to waste. Yes, he took damage, whatever you want to call it, man. But look, listen, man, sometimes when you go to war, bro, when you go to war and you got to prove that you somebody, bro, you got you to gotta take those necessary risks, bro. You know, and I'm not saying take unnecessary punches. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about if he would have closed the gap the right way, came behind with his offense because the volume was, was what helped him. The conditioning is what helped him. His physical strength is what helped him, you know in the back end of that fight as Zaria was trying to set him up, you know, for a big shot. And he knew it, but I love the fact that he said, you know, you know what, I'm going to try to go for the knockout. 
Yeah. You know? With that being said, do you think he's ready for a couple of uh, yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I, I've been there said. I've been there said he's ready. You know? And he's not a guy that's talked about a whole hell of a lot. And he's not a guy that... He's not a guy that... That a lot of people call. Say, I want to fight that guy. You know, Barboza. But after tonight, getting hurt... At the end, maybe, maybe he'll get some calls. Maybe he'll get, get some calls and... and you know, sometimes showing a little vulnerability is is, is a good thing. Yeah. You know, but I saw a lot of good things in there from from him tonight. I saw some ring rust, but once he shook that off, you saw you saw the performance. You saw the activity pick up. You know, he's used to throwing 70, 80 punches around, bro. That's a busy that's a busy ass 140 pound 140 pound. That's busy. Thank you so much for watching this video, and make sure to subscribe for more videos of your favorite fighters over here on Fight Up TV. And give us a follow online as well, at Fight Up TV, on Twitter, and on Instagram. We appreciate it, guys.